Hey Archics, welcome to another video. So in this video, we are going to do the sequence similarity searching for nucleic acids. In the previous video, I gave you briefly the explanation about how to calculate sequence similarity and the difference between similarity, identity, and homology. If you haven't watched the previous video, I am definitely recommending you to do check it out. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to understand the future videos. So in that particular video, I taught you about what is gap, what are the different methods for penalizing a gap. I showed you how to calculate the alignment score. There was one question in DBT GRF on calculating the alignment score. Number of matches and minusing it from the gap. Obviously, I told you that a mismatch also is not counted. It's just given a value of zero, right? So that way you can calculate the alignment score. Now let us go on to actually what are the different algorithms available for sequence similarity searches in nucleic acids. So without much further ado, let's get right into this video. Now in the alignment algorithms, we have to look at some programming methods. Now firstly, you may think what is the need of doing this. If you remember from our previous video, I had shown you how to align sequences and score them, right? But that was a very small sequence. Imagine you have to score a nucleotide sequence having 10,000 nucleotides. Think about the number of gaps that you will have to add, the number of nucleotides you will have to calculate. It's a lot that cannot be done manually. And therefore, you need a computer program to do it. And that is where these alignment algorithms come into the picture. So we have three major alignment algorithms. First is called as a dynamic programming method. Second is the dot matrix or the dot plot method. Third is the heuristic methods. Heuristic methods are more advanced and they are used for high throughput sequencing. We are not going to dive into those because they are not a part of the questions the syllabus that DBT asks. Okay, so we are going to focus on two, that is dynamic programming method and the dot matrix method. Now, briefly, if I have to introduce you to the differences between the two, the dynamic programming method is a quantitative way where you actually get alignment scores. Whereas the dot matrix is a graphical way, rather a qualitative way to just see the sequence similarity between the two residues. Now, in dynamic programming, you have two different types of alignments. So depending upon what kind of alignment, you have different algorithms. So for a local alignment, you have a different algorithm. For a global alignment, we have a different algorithm. When to go for which algorithm, we are going to now understand. So dynamic methods, alignment is done quantitatively. And this is possible by calculating the number of matches and mismatches between the sequence and also by addition or subtraction of the addition of the gaps. Okay. Now, to understand which algorithm to use, you first have to understand the difference between a local alignment and a global alignment. So consider these two sequences. This is the target sequence and this is the query sequence. So if you want to check for a small region, you go for local alignment. Global alignment entire length. Okay. So if you want to compare only a small region within your query sequence and target sequence, you go for local alignment. Global alignment is also called as end-to-end -end alignment, where the entire target and query sequences are aligned. Now, global alignment, as you can see, people are scoring right from the first to the last nucleotide. Whereas for a local alignment, it is scored only where there are most similarities. So this is more localized and it is to find a particular region. Okay. Whereas global alignment is end-to-end -end comparison. This is a very helpful distinction between the two. When do you go for global alignment? When you have sequences of the similar length and when they are closely related. See, if you have two sequences from Homo sapiens, say one is from you and one is from your friend. If you want to align these two sequences, you should go for global alignment. 
Why? Because both would be of similar length and both are from the same species. So you will have more similarity. Therefore, it makes sense to do the alignment over the entire length, right? Now, the algorithm used for the global alignment is the needleman bunch algorithm, okay? So if the sequences are closely related and of the similar length, we will go for global alignment, which is end-to-end -end alignment. Whereas if you want to, you know, compare the protein amylase from humans with the amylase protein of, say, an animal, then in that case, you know that an animal or a bacteria will not have the same sequence length as yours. You are both are not very closely related. So if you have unequal sequence length and the species are unrelated, you will go for local alignment. When you actually want to just find a regional similarity, okay? So regional similarity is found by local alignment and you can use the Smith-Waterman algorithm to calculate now, there are exclusive methods of doing this. You can do this manually for smaller sequences. I have not incorporated that in this uh, video series because nobody is asking you to do these uh, needleman Woodruff, smith Smith-Waterman algorithms in the DBD paper. However, if you still want me to show you how to do that, definitely do comment down below. So that is about the dynamic programming methods. Moving on to the next one, which is the graphical method, the dot plot method or the dot matrix method. Now, what is this particular method? So in this method, the two sequences that you want to compare are placed on the horizontal and vertical axis. So sequence one is placed on the horizontal axis and sequence two is placed on the vertical axis. And basically what you do is you do residue matching. For example, I have this sequence A, A, T, T, a, A, T, P, C, and here I have a sequence A, C, C, C. Okay, say suppose. Now this is my sequence one or let's say sequence two, whatever, and this is sequence two. Okay, now what you will do is you will compare. So first residue of first residue of sequence one, first residue of sequence two. They are matching, so then you place a dot. First residue of sequence, second residue of sequence one, second residue of sequence two, not matching. Leave it blank. Again, third of sequence one, third of sequence two, not matching. This one is also not matching. So wherever it's not matching, you leave it blank. And where it is matching, like in this case, you put a dot. Okay, so this is basically the simple method. So you will write the sequence to be compared on the horizontal and vertical axis of the matrix, and then you scan the residues. Wherever you have a match between the residue, you place a dot. If there is no match, you leave it blank. Now, let me show you what will happen if the two residues or the two sequences are very, very similar. So imagine this is the sequence. So this is a match, first residue, second residue is also a match, third residue is also a match. Fourth is not a match, fifth is a match. So if you see that if the sequences are identical, you will have a diagonal line running through your matrix. Okay, so this diagonal line that you get is actually indicator that the sequence is similar. Now, say suppose till here you have similarity and then further on you have similarity. There is a place where you do not have anything, you have a gap. Then this gap is representative of an insertion or a deletion. So there might have been an insertion or deletion between the two sequences because of which a gap is generated. Also, another thing is if you find parallel diagonal lines, that means that there are repetitive regions in this sequence. So if you have a middle diagonal and then you have smaller diagonals, smaller diagonals parallel to this one, then these represent repetitive regions. So in DBT paper, they give you a graph, a dot matrix, or they give you a sequence and they ask you to determine whether it has a similar sequence, whether there is insertion, deletion, etc. So I hope you will be able to answer that. Now. The other thing is, you might obviously think that this is like, say, a five nucleotide residue. So definitely, it's easier to do a dot matrix. But ma'am, imagine if there are like 10,000 residues, then what to do? So obviously, if there are 10,000 residues, you might get a lot of noise level, right? And it will be difficult to join the dots. 
and that's when people have used a filtering technique called as window or tuple so what does this mean so here what we are doing is if one residue matches you are putting a dot right but when you have a longer sequence there might be that one residue is matching because of chance so therefore what is done is if one residue is matching no it will not be considered as a dot what they do is if at a stretch you get three that are similar then you place a dot on all the three so that that way you will account for only genuine matches rather than just placing dots here and there right so that is the method here is a dot plot for a particular sequence as you can see that here they started with a gg which is a match then there is no match here so a blank was left again the third one is a match therefore they put a dot what we can see is a stretch the a diagonal having a midline diagonal so this indicates the similarity if the diagonal was running entire through that means that they were exact sequence but this diagonal is a smaller one so this represents a similar sequence but it's not very uh, you know not the same sequences you also have these parallel lines as you can see these two are parallel right parallel lines these indicate repetitive so if there are stretches of repetitive sequences then they are represented as parallel lines now sometimes here as you observe there is a gap then that is considered as an insertion or deletion this is a very beautiful interpretation i have taken it from this website you can definitely go and check out it so now if you have the diagonal straight line that is in case number 1 it is for a match right but if you have gaps like it is shown in 2a that represents a type of mutation now if there is a shift in the diagonal okay that means that it is a insertion okay so you can see insertion shift of mean diagonal so i'll just rub off what i have drawn and you will see that see this is the diagonal here and there has been a shift in the diagonal look here this line this was the initial diagonal now this has shifted over here so this shift in the diagonal is indicative of insertion and uh, deletion is when again it will shift of the mean diagonal so to see is again the diagonal has got shifted so it is a deletion so that way by looking at the dot matrix you, you can easily you know just look at it and determine if your segments has a good kind of identity so you don't have to waste a lot of time in alignment just look at the dot matrix and if they are similar you can get an idea there are many variations to this dot matrix that is you can find if there are any internal repeats in a sequence or if there are any self complementary regions in the dna sequence so you can identify self complementarity of dna sequences and internal repeat elements how to do that so to calc to find out internal repeat elements you align the sequence with itself okay so same sequence you put on both the axes so where you have perfect matching there you will have a diagonal so since both the sequences are same you are going to have a entire diagonal and if there are any repeats then you will find parallel areas like this which i showed you in the previous graph as well if you want to identify any self complementarity sequences like in you want to calculate you want to find inverted repeats or you want to find those uh, sequences that form an internal structure like a loop hairpin structure or something you can basically keep the sequence one on one axis and the reverse complemented sequence on the second axis to discover the hair pin structures of the inverted repeats so in this case if you find parallel diagonals it will indicate inverted repeats this is a ready reckoner for you just by looking at this you will be able to you know interpret what the dot matrix has so if you have only one diagonal end to end that's a perfect match mean sequence 1 and sequence 2 are perfect matches of each other if you have parallel to the diagonal repeat sequences if you have something that forms like an x it is a palindrome if the entire diagonal you have and you know half uh, hangs of these sequences then it is a partial palindrome if you have a like kind of a empty space in middle it's the microsatellites and if you have like you know cuts 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 like you know aberrant diagonal then it's a homologous sequence and then if you have 
a shift in the position of a diagonal it is indel indel is insertion or deletion if you have something like this like a v type of figure a diagonal and kind of a v like this it is called as an inversion so these kind of questions have also been asked in the dbt paper so that's all for the ssr of nucleic acids in the next one i'm going to do the ssr for proteins so stay tuned for that video until then please keep studying and do join my uh, telegram channel i'll share all my notes over there that's it for me for today i'll see you in my next video bye